Welcome back to another episode of Power Word Nerd. Backstories for the Order of the Burning Fist. Year, negative 40. Cornerack Heldenhammer fought during an early Cortanian War. He gained notoriety and power. The War of the Harsh Winter. Year 80. The oldest records of dwarves in Thadius place some as mountain nomads in western Thadius and some as citizens of Coldbank. Things in Coldbank were peaceful, but as time passed on, the High Elves in Coldbank began to feel superior to the Dwarves. High Elves lived much longer, and their culture was more sophisticated. High Elves loved magic, yet the Dwarves were bewildered by it. Year 940 A merchant port city of Tieflings, Heartspring, sprang up in southern Thadius. Commerce and wealth flooded the region, and nine barons rose as leaders. The nine barons formed a group, the Council of Nine, to govern. Year 1140. Contested elections were held in Coldbank. Thiasin, a high elf, was elected to lead the Coldbank government. He decided to form a monarchy system in Coldbank, declaring himself king. Thyssen's family line was to rule the kingdom until the end of time. The dwarves accepted this at first, but as time passed, the dwarves were treated more and more like second-class citizens. Year 1366 Dwarven miners in Heartspring unearthed a mysterious civilization beneath the city. The civilization was populated by a strange race of dark elves called Drow. The Council of Nine met with the Dark Elf leader, Marathi. Marathi and her people were unaware a surface world existed and quickly became hostile towards their tiefling neighbors. Year 1368 Marathi and her forces surprised the populace of Heartspring with a night attack from underneath the city. Most of the tieflings were slaughtered or enslaved. The Council of Nine was captured and all members executed. While raiding the stockpiled goods of Heartspring, Marathi uncovered a magic whip, Heartrender, she called it. The whip possessed great power. The drow burned much of Heartspring to the ground and founded a new city, mostly subterranean, Harganeth. Marathi was the city's queen. The few tieflings that escaped fled on merchant vessels, many of whom found their way to Ariandale, a huge island populated by Wanti, eventually founding the city of Breams. Year 1412 Azog, the great white orc leader of the Ragnar orcs, conquered all of Yanala in the conquest of the Ragnar. Year 2250 The Ragnar orcs lost hold of Yanala and were nearly pushed to extinction. The Ragnars and other orcish clans fell back to Macthul, settling in Rogdon. Year 2264 Angry that the orcs no longer ruled Yanala, and largely blaming the Ragnars, the other orcish clans attempted to annihilate the Ragnars in Arogden. Many escaped and fled Yanala, settling on a large island in northeastern Thadius. Year 2579 Limvari Endara, the elderly lord of Birdhaven, was dissatisfied with the state of Thadius. He believed it was wrong that the rulers of Ferelden, Coldbank, and Harganeth called themselves kings and queens. Limvari declared himself king of Birdhaven and Western Thadius. Year 2581 The War of the Cruel King's Pride A dark madness took hold in King Limvari's mind. He became brutal and ruthless in his rule. Before long, the citizens of Birdhaven began to fear the king, who had grown so different from the man he once was. One day, during a snowfall, Birdhaven launched a surprise attack against Coldbank. Unprepared for battle, Coldbank's army was utterly defeated in the field. The survivors holed up in the castle, 
and endured a year-long siege. Shortly after the attack, the King of Birdhaven declared himself rightful ruler of the continent and Emperor of Thaddeus. Year 2581 During Birdhaven's siege of Coldbank from 2581 to 2582, the High Elves and Dwarves lived together in very close quarters. Tempers flared and many of the Dwarves had enough of the superior acting High Elves. Year 2582 Emperor Lumvari's forces rampaged across the continent. They attacked Hobbiton and enslaved many of the populace. They sunk the Harganeth warships and sieged the walls of Ferelden. Lumvari's victims held a meeting deciding to unite against Birdhaven and oppose the Emperor with a unified front. Year 2585 Battle to Topple the Owl Emperor Drow of Harganeth, Dwarves and High Elves of Coldbank, Humans of Ferelden, Hobbits of Hobbiton, and the Mountain Dwarves of the Thaddeus Mountains attacked the sleeping army of Birdhaven just south of Ferelden, breaking their long siege. Birdhaven's forces were routed and fled back to the Emperor's castle. The Allied army pressed on, laying siege to the castle walls. The aging Emperor fled Birdhaven, traveling to the west. Limvari sailed away from Thaddeus, taking his family with him. The army that garrisoned Birdhaven surrendered to the Allied forces. The Drow soldiers wanted to execute all of Birdhaven's populace, but the rest of the Alliance recognized that the people of Birdhaven suffered most of all from Limvari's rule. The soldiers and citizens were allowed to be absorbed into Ferelden. Birdhaven itself was set ablaze. The small family of Indara sailed around Thaddeus, as the Patriarch lost his last vestiges of sanity in a senile delirium. He died from exposure and old age, shortly after arriving in southern Dova. He was buried in the rocky gray landscape. Limvari's young son, Prostagani, made a name for himself in Dova using the abilities he learned from his father. Year 2593 Shortly after the war with the Emperor of Birdhaven, tensions in Coldbank became unbearable. Bradowak Grimseeker, a fierce and charismatic dwarven warrior and hero during the war with Birdhaven, incited his dwarven brothers to rebel and attempt to usurp the ruling class in Coldbank. Blood ran in the streets as the dwarves' brutal surprise attack was too much for the High Elves to overcome. Bradowak's strike was the start of a civil war, but the war was short-lived. The dwarven forces pushed into the throne room, but were utterly crushed by the High Elf mages they encountered there. Bradowak fell in battle against the elven magic and the rest of the dwarves were routed. High Elves pursued those dwarves that retreated and executed every dwarf they caught on charges of treason. Many dwarves escaped through the gates of Coldbank. They fled and scrambled around the continent. Survivors founded the town of Umbervin, formed nomadic groups, settled in Ferelden, and joined the nomadic mountain dwarves in the west. From the day of the failed rebellion and on, the dwarves in Thaddeus had developed a deep-seated Hatred for all magic. Year 2611 Prostagani defeated Vladoro and the Vampire Coven split. Kantian and May went into hiding separately. Nayef and Nosferatu formed a new coven. And Prostagani formed a martial arts academy to train an elite group of warriors for Year 2611, Prastagani returned to his father's gravesite and built a modest castle. As an homage to the life he once knew, he named the castle Birdhaven. Year 2612, Nayef and Nosferatu marched from the Zeeg with an undead host, hoping to complete Vladoro's vision. 
May Gaikon and Kansi and Brightfire had parted ways, but both remained in Nazig. May took residence in Zomplekt Castle, while Kansian went into hiding deep in a cave. Year 3130. The city of Daston was founded. Daston was established as a hub for Paladin Orders and Thadius to recruit, train, and live. The vampire threat in Cortania was becoming increasingly dire. Daston was built in a central location on the continent, so a vampire scourged the land, the Paladins could react quickly to smite them to hell. Year 5400 Nasiratu angered Nayef by attempting to bring a young vampire he sired, Vlad, into the coven of elder vampires. Nayef left the coven and sought out to join Redacted, which he did. Nosferatu and Vlad left as well, planning to become vampire gods. Year 5416 One of Shindo, the Mind Delver's students, arose as a progeny in mind magic. His name was Zabalto Valadaxos. Year 5418 Nosferatu and Vlad had put their plan into motion. The two intended to use the Ring of the Damned for their scheme. They had most of Thaddeus under their control. Pinus Greystone, Glaba Heldenhammer, the Order of the Scales of Vengeance, the Order of the Iron Will, and the Order of the Watchful Guardians set out to stop the vampires. Year 5420 Nomadic dwarves and the dwarves of Ferelden were harried by the werewolves and vampires that hunted in Thaddeus. Kaz Karum, a dwarven warrior and roaming nomad, decided to unite all of his people to protect them from their enemies. He treated with the nomadic mountain dwarves, and they agreed on building a great castle in their region of Thaddeus. Kaz then traveled to Ferelden. There he hired a human builder to assist with the construction of a new dwarven kingdom. Kaz convinced the dwarves of Ferelden and the nearby town of Umbervin to join him near the Thaddeus Mountains in the west. They agreed. While traveling towards the location of his new castle, the dwarves were attacked by a werewolf pack led by Argus. The dwarves fended off the attack and continued on their way. Kaskarum fought fiercely in the battle, defeating Argus in single combat and wounding him. Argus lost an eye. His impressive combat prowess spread to the other dwarves and they celebrated Kaskarum as a dwarven hero. The dwarves worked on the castle for months. As the castle neared completion, the dwarves received word that paladin orders were battling two powerful vampires. Vlad and Nosferatu, and their zombie army, in the east near Ferelden. Kaz Karum set out with his best dwarven warriors to assist in the battle. Upon arrival, the dwarves discovered Ilmeter's Order of the Iron Will and Helm's Order of the Watchful Guardians battling for their lives against the vampires. The dwarves joined in the fight. They fought on as best they could, but were defeated by the vampires and their army. The surviving dwarves retreated, but found themselves pursued by Nosferatu. Sacrificing himself to buy time for his brothers, Kaz Karum turned back to face the Elder Vampire in single combat. He was killed, but he bought enough time for the other dwarves to flee back to the building site. Year 5420 Cross von Hamel marched on Golden Light in Divinagon with an undead host. Nosferatu and Vlad had believed the clerics and paladins in Divinagon were a grave threat to their plans. The two vampires made arrangements with the leader of Mizblatten to join his army with Cross's undead forces. Cross and his army abandoned their mission and returned to Nazig upon Nosferatu's death. Cross was now under the control of May Gaikon. The chip of Amethyst from the Ring of the Dam that was embedded in Cross's skull gave May full power over him now that Nosferatu was gone. Mizblatten's hosts continued to march against their enemy, but they were soundly defeated and repelled by the Grand Cardinal's forces. The year 5420, the Battle of Ferelden. The Order of the Scales of Vengeance formed a pact with Argus and his werewolf pack. They marched on Ferelden. The god Tyr granted Glaba the Ring of Light to battle Nosferatu and Vlad. 
Nosferatu was slain in the ensuing battle, but not before Vlad took the life of Pinus Greystone. The vampires were defeated at great cost to the living in Thaddeus. Argus took the Ring of the Damned from Nosferatu's corpse. He vowed to keep the unholy relic from the clutches of evil and devoted his life to protecting it. His werewolf pack would go on to protect the ring for generations. Year 5421 Glaba Heldenhammer and the remaining paladins of his order resettled in Dayston. The city's population was completely ravaged by the vampires. The sadness of losing so many paladins from the other orders overwhelmed Glaba. After a few weeks, he and the Order of the Scales of Vengeance abandoned Thaddeus. They traveled to Divinagon and settled in Golden Light, never to return. Year 5423 After completing the castle near the western mountains, the dwarves decided to name it Kaz Karum, after the fallen dwarf that helped to found their new kingdom and sacrificed himself to save his allies. Kaz's young son, Zogrim, was named king. Year 5423 The child king, Zogrim Karum, began his reign over the newly founded kingdom. His rule was just, and he did all in his power to strengthen Kaz Karum. Zogrim formed infrastructure, passed sensible laws, and expanded the royal family. Expert blacksmiths, stonemasons, and warriors arose from the populace. His people mined precious gemstones from the mountain rock and explored the treasure-filled mountain caves near their new home. A treasure trove that rivaled the dragon's hoard in value and magnificence was stored in Karum Castle's basement treasure vault. Years, decades, and centuries of happiness and success endured on as the kingdom grew and time passed. Year 5816 One day, a strange traveler, Solomon, visited Karum Castle and met with the king. The elderly man was hosted by the aging King Zogrim at a feast. The traveler advised the king he heard a rumor about a rich nobleman building a mansion far to the north. This nobleman was said to be good and just, but his lands were plagued by werewolves and the foul beasts kidnapped his daughter. The traveler added the man beseeched Ferelden and Coldbank for aid, but neither would send soldiers to help. Hearing that the arrogant High Elves of Coldbank denied this man aid in saving his daughter, Zogrim was convinced he should take it upon himself to travel north and defeat the cursed werewolves. The old king put together a fighting force of warrior dwarves and set out towards northern Thaddeus. He found the mansion rather easily, but the doors were locked. Zogrim and his men found a note on the doors. To any who come to give aid. I hired mercenaries to save my daughter from the foul werewolves. I am accompanying them to a system of caves in the west. If you come to assist me, meet me there. Also, they stole a special ring that my daughter's grandmother gifted her on her tenth name day. Please recover it. The note contained very specific directions on how to find the caves. The nobleman did not sign his name to the note, but Zogrim was certain this man needed his help. The king and the other dwarves sought out the caves, the werewolves, the missing girl, and the lost ring. They happened upon many werewolves as they traveled towards their destination. The group fought bravely and killed many of the creatures. Zogrim found it strange that every foe he came across denied knowledge of a daughter or a nobleman. After slaying his way through much of the mountain pass, Zogrim came to believe the werewolves might have been speaking true. He decided to return to the mansion and seek out the nobleman once again. Zogrim and his werewolf hunting party arrived back at the mansion and found the doors open. They went inside and explored. The dwarves came upon the owner of the mansion. The man they encountered asked the king if the dwarves killed all of the werewolves. The mansion owner also asked about his daughter's missing amethyst ring but he did not ask about his daughter or her well-being. Realizing something was amiss, King Zogrim attempted to retreat from the mansion, but the mansion owner revealed his true identity. The being declared he was Vlad, son of the devil, a dark being sighed by the elder vampire Nosferatu. 
Vlad and his undead minions fell upon Zogrim's party as they desperately attempted to flee the mansion. Vampires and other creatures of the night spilled out into the main hall from hidden rooms and compartments. One dwarf managed to escape, but Zogrim and the rest of the group were unable to get away. The dwarf survivor immediately returned to Kaskarum and reported what happened to the king. A great dwarven host was raised by Zogrim's heir, Daz, to strike at Vlad's mansion, but when they arrived, the mansion was empty. Nothing was there except for the torn apart corpses of the dwarven werewolf hunters, save for Zogrim, whose corpse was not present amongst the dead. The frustrated dwarves burned the mansion down and returned to Kaskarum. Year 6128 Marjorie Sharpeye, a high elf, was born in Coldbank. She was born to a noble house and was raised as part of the Coldbank High Society. Year 6162 Infant Wilma Wormwiggle was abducted from her house by Ethel Greentooth. Year 6173 King Zogram's successor, King Daz, was abroad on a diplomatic trip when a dwarf bearing a similar appearance, aside from an unnaturally pale complexion, approached the castle gates of Kaskarum. He demanded the gate guards admit him into the castle, and they complied with little resistance. This dwarf entered with a small group of retainers, clad in black. The group trudged through the castle with purpose, heading straight towards the throne room. The dwarf appeared very familiar with Kaskarum's layout and navigated the hallways with ease. Guardsmen and men-at-arms felt a weakness overcome them as this dwarf approached, only able to comply with his demands and move aside for him to pass. Hearing their father, Daz, had arrived home from his diplomatic mission, the young dwarven brothers, Prince Thorgrim and Prince Morgrim, rushed towards the Kaskarum throne room to greet him. Upon arrival, the two princes discovered the throne room empty and the treasure vault doors wide open. Becoming immediately suspicious and hearing the noises of many people moving around inside the vault, the brothers egressed and retrieved the castle guards. They returned to the vault and found the room empty, aside from loose gemstones. The hidden door leading to the staircase of the basement vault stood wide open. The basement vault was special, as it contained the most powerful magic items and most expensive treasures the kingdom of Kazkarum possessed. The walls and doors were enchanted with special dwarven runes, meant to defend the vault from magic and evil. Nothing magical or supernatural in nature could take place inside the vault. Prince Thorgrim, Prince Morgrim, and the castle guards descended the stairs and entered the basement vault. They observed a dwarf that closely resembled their father Daz, but it was clearly not him. The brothers also noticed a dozen other cloaked figures, dressed in black and possessing unnaturally pale skin. The dwarf identified himself to the princes as their missing grandfather, Zogrim. Dwarves live a long time but the brothers had never met their grandfather and were aware he was already quite old when he disappeared. Making things even more suspicious, the dwarves noticed Zogram's companions were holding cloth sacks filled with treasure and magic items from the vault. Zogram himself held a magic brass urn. The princes ordered their grandfather arrested and taken to the dungeons for questioning. Zogram and his group resisted, revealing they were capable of inhuman strength and speed. A battle ensued and the two princes joined in the fight. The castle guards and Zogram's companions were all killed during the battle, but the princes noticed Zogram's companions had sharp teeth to go along with their unnatural physical prowess. Zogram and his group were vampires. The two princes battled their ancestor in the throne room, but he proved too powerful for them to overcome, knocking Thorgrim to the ground, unconscious. During the fight, Morgrim acquisitioned one of the magic items in the vault, the Burning Fist. The magic gauntlet ignited in flames, and Morgrim briefly gained the upper hand against Zogrim, pushing him to the back of the vault. Morgrim delivered a powerful blow with the enchanted weapon, briefly stunning Zogrim and lighting him aflame. Morgrim used this opportunity to grab Thorgrim from the vault floor and retreat outside, locking the vault doors behind him. In the centuries that followed, 
multiple attempts were made to destroy Zogram and reclaim the treasures in the basement vault. Each attempt failed and ended with lost dwarven lives. Year 6223 Prince Morgrim, thirsting for adventure, decided to abandon the kingdom of Kazkarum. He left and formed the Order of the Burning Fist, a mercenary group. He brought the Burning Fist gauntlet with him that he used to defeat the first king of Kazkarum, Zogrim Karum. Year 6255 A young dwarf, Gragas Stormbringer, worked in the mines of Kazkarum. Most nights, he visited the local pub and listened intently to the tales other dwarves told of adventure and excitement. One day, he saw an advertisement. Some older dwarven sailors were looking for a young recruit to help out on their vessel. Gragas joined them and sailed with their crew for the next 30 years. Year 6285 Gragas Stormbringer and his companions shipwrecked near an island after a bad storm. On the first day of the incident, his crewmates were devoured by ghouls and Gragas fled for his life. While desperately trying to survive, Gragas encountered an elder dwarf who handed him a warhammer and a shield, bearing an unfamiliar symbol. Gragas engaged the ghouls with his new weaponry, finding them to possess a magical nature. The weapons allowed him to wield the power of thunder. He slayed thousands of undead on the island. Once all the foul creatures were slain, a bruised and exhausted Gragas fell unconscious. He later woke aboard an elven merchant vessel, the Denabola. While on the ship, Gragas met the High Elf Captain, Gontil. Gontil brought him back to his home, Kazkarum. After arriving, Gragas researched the symbol on his shield. He found it was the mark of Muaman Duathal, the god of travel and thunder. He continued to research this being and eventually became a cleric in his service. Year 6286 Gragas Stormbringer left Kazkarum to spread the word of Mwamam Dwathal throughout Cortania. Year 6301 Kevlian Greystone was born to Marjorie Sharpeye and Micklean Greystone. He was raised within the Order of the Burning Fist an order of mercenaries and questing adventurers formed by the dwarven royal Morgrim Karum. Marjorie, a high elf noble from Coldbank, could not stay with the order due to her noble birth, nor could she bring Kevlian with her due to his human blood. She left Kevlian in the care of Micklian and his allies, returning to Coldbank and her life of nobility. Shortly after returning to Coldbank, the other nobles discovered she had a child with a human. Marjorie was banished from Coldbank and left Dadius. She took to the sea in disgrace and boarded a merchant ship, the Denabola. Year 6301 The King of Soulfall successfully sieged Frostfire, defeating the young barbarian king, Theodric Ostrogoth, during the Northern War of Unification, one of the many wars between the Northerners and Highlanders. He united Un under his rule. Year 6305 High Elf Erwin Swiftwater embarked on an adventure to slay the dragon, Venomfang, on a northeastern island in Thadeus. He left his ten-year-old son, Dokin, behind. Erwin's companions were killed by the dragon, and Erwin was captured, living as Venomfang's slave for the next fifty years. Year 6325 The Ragnar orcs of northeastern Thadeus raided Un, attacking Frostfire for plunder. The Ragnars erred in targeting Frostfire, home to Theodric Ostrogoth, the former barbarian king that was subdued by the King of Soulfall during the Northern War of Unification. The orcs were forced to retreat against the might of the barbarian highlanders. Ivar, a direct descendant to the ancient Ragnar conqueror Azog, was taken prisoner. Year 6330 During his five years of imprisonment, Ivar fell in love with Theodric's youngest daughter, Gwendolyn Ostrogoth. She snuck into Ivar's cell many nights to make love to him. Gwendolyn gave birth to Odoacer, Ivar's half-orc child. Gwendolyn had Odoacer swiftly smuggled away to Thaddeus. She approached her father and asked for Ivar's freedom, confessing her love for the Ragnar orc and the child they had together. Theodric had Ivar executed that very night. Gwendolyn fled to Thaddeus and raised her son there. 
year 6335, McLean Greystone passed away from old age. Kevley and Greystone met Doken Swiftwater in the Umbervin Tavern. The two half-elves became fast friends, and Doken joined the Order of the Burning Fist. Year 6339, Zambini and Dara trained at Axehenge. He was 14 years old. Later that year, he set off with Lord Indara's forces to aid Dova's allies in Munronia during the First War of A's Wildlands. Munronia was under siege from a goblin invasion. He met a human woman, Gems, and a Munronian soldier, Draven Hardum, during his time there. Year 6340, a 15-year-old blue tiefling, Bretson, was initiated into the Blades of Fate an order of assassins spanning all of time and covering many planes of existence. Year 6348 Bartho and Megli Mandred were killed by vampires while traveling outside Ferelden. Their daughter, Marigold, was sent to live with Megli's sister, Ethel, in the Fetid Garden. Year 6353 Dombir and Dara left Birdhaven, setting off to become an adventurer. Mila and Dara was taken away three weeks later by her mother, Lady Gems. Year 6353. Birdhaven and Dova was attacked by an invading army. Zambini and Dara, lord of the castle, was defeated and left for dead. The castle was burned after the invaders failed to find the Ring of Light, which was the purpose of their visit. Year 6354. Zabalto Valadaxos and his allies sought out the Ring of Light at the ruined ancestral castle of Birdhaven in Thadius. They were unable to find the ring, but Zabalto was convinced it was in the ancient labyrinth beneath the castle. He stayed behind to search for it. Year 6354. Zimler, a master monk living within a temple in Daston, was targeted by the Blades of Fate for assassination. Bretson arrived to carry out the mission and was soundly beaten. Zimler nursed Bretson back to health and allowed Bretson to stay at the temple. Bretson spent weeks plotting how to take Zimler out, but he was won over by Zimler's kind nature and incredible skill. Bretson renounced his membership with the Blades of Fate and joined the temple. Year 6355 Zimler's temple was again attacked by the Blades of Fate. This time, the Assassin's Guild sent several seasoned members, including Zafala Mirashard, one of the Blades of Fate leaders and Bretson's mother. As Zimler fought them off, the temple was burned to the ground. Bretson was separated from Zimler and searched for a new calling. Zimler relocated to a hidden settlement in the fringe region of Dova. Welcome back to another episode of Power Word Nerd. episode of Power Word Nerd. 